Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another weekly schlag. Leander's over there being awesome. We don't get to see Leander nearly enough, but you can see Kevin is still rocking and rolling. And we have new balance bikes uh, that we're putting together. So soon we'll get Leander back on the balance bike showing you guys all what's up. Um, <clears throat> but this is our little weekly vlog where we show you all kinds of cool motorcycle stuff. It's going to be a short one this week because I'm going to the Grinduro down in Texas uh, very soon. Um, so just a couple days of filming and then I got a boogie. Um, but yeah, if you, if you think that sounds awesome, stick with us. We're going to do forks first. Alright guys, so I know I said we're doing forks first, that is the first job, but I have to show you what I'm super duper excited about. We got a whole bunch of V-tires. I know it's, there's a street, but anyway, whatever. Let's open these things up and see what we got. Make some part numbers. Alright guys, this is the first one that they actually sent me to uh, try. So um, I'm not a big Trials tire fan in general but Craig uh, really wants me to give this thing a shot and try it out so I will be mounting this up eventually I'm not sure exactly when um, I gotta figure out uh, when I can get to some kind of real rocky super like just rocky terrain because these don't work well in the dirt but uh, anyway if we are gonna try it out it is what is this thing called it is the VT30806 Salamander so, there's that. All right. Now these are for stock. Because if you haven't watched our video yet, you need to. I really, really, really like these tires. These are the Force ATs. Um, and I think that might be what's in the rest of this thing is just a whole bunch of Force ATs because I got three sets coming. So. I'll dig in and make sure there's nothing else, but um, yeah, these things are awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, it's time to do some force. Kenny's right over there. <laughs> and uh, he's making me laugh. <laughs> so these are off of a, I believe a 2012 300 XCW. It's got the open chamber KTM forks, which I really, really, really like. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna check our clicker settings. We're gonna start up here and we're gonna go in until we stop so we know how far out it is, um, how, he, how he's got it set. So. so it's seven out from all the way in. So then we're gonna open it all the way up. There we go. Now we'll check compression. So these are different than um, the more modern style fork, the twin chambers. It's compression on the bottom, rebound on the top. So that's 10. All right. All right, next thing, guys, we're taking off the bleeders. Um, I actually have a tool that makes it so you don't have to take these off, but I like to just get them out of the way while we're working on things because I don't want to break them. All right, these take this top fork cap. You got to have this. All right, guys, so next is we got to pull the spring down and slide a wrench onto the nut that this is locked down onto. Um, I sadly do not have a 22 millimeter wrench that is this skinny, so I've ground that one down. This is a cheap, I don't know, I probably bought it at Home Depot, but anyway, it will fit. Haddocks. There we go, get that on there. Now we got a 24 millimeter wrench up here and we're gonna break this loose. Guys, to get this off, you have to grab a hold of this nut and not the big cap with the pins. If you put the cap tool with the pins, it spins this around and this is the preload adjuster and it will just spin and get it all out of whack. It will eventually come off, but it takes forever and it'll get their preload that they have set way off. So um, grab it on that nut. All right, 
There we go. Set that down. We're going to take the adjuster rod out, set it down out of the way. These are preload spacers. We put that over with the cap. We'll take our spring, put it down here, park it where the oil can drain. We're going to flip this upside down. So, a 19 millimeter, we're going to break our legs with impact. There we go, there's our compression stack. There's our cartridge, we're gonna put that in our bucket. We're gonna drain that here in a bit. Now we're going to take these forks apart. Well, we got our uh, flat blade screwdriver and we're gonna put it in between the seal and the fork tube like that and twist it. Now we're gonna use our same flat blade. We're gonna dig down here, get this circlip out and slide hammer her apart. Now, like all my fork seal jobs, I like to take the bushings and seals off and lay them down in order. So we got the inner bushing first, outer bushing, washer, oil seal, circlip, and dust seal. Now I'm going to go get this all cleaned up with the outer tube. We'll come back and we'll start putting it back together. All right, guys, got everything cleaned up. <clears throat> We're ready to go back together. So I really like these bullets uh, from Motion Pro. They make this just easy. Slide them over, and then that way, when you're putting the seals on, they don't want to cut or tear on this lip that's right here. So today we are using uh, SKF heavy duty seals. I like SKF seals a lot. Um, I also use OEM seals. They're both really good. Um, it's just SKF is what I have more of right now. So I'm going to use those. Now, when I go together with these things, I don't, sometimes I put a little bit of grease on there. Sometimes I do other things. Um, but today we're just going to use a little bit of fork fluid. Actually, this is technically shock fluid in that thing um, from doing a shock before. So we'll go dust seal clip, oil seal, washer, you go outer bushing, inner bushing, there we go, now we come together, and you always want to drive the bushings, or the bushing and uh, washer down into place first, before you do the seals. There you go. That satisfying tink sound of the bushing going home where it belongs. And we go oil seal. Take a shirt clip, put that down in there, finish putting it in with a flat blade. I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. Be careful as you do that not to cut the seal with your flat blade screwdriver. And then to get the dust seal in, just like that. You're good. Now, we're going to take our cartridge and we're going to bleed it. Everything out of it. Now we're going to take it, slide it in here. And we're going to finish guiding it in to its home through here with our finger. Okay, it's where it needs to be. Take our base valve. Start that by hand and you can feel it start. Then to tighten that up, I pull out like this. Then I'm going to cock this over, like just pull it kind of like that to the side. Impact. There we go. Now we're going to add four coil, five weight maxima is what I use. And eventually you're going to start feeling resistance as you push down and come up. 
And you want to just keep going up and down so there's no bubbles coming out. We're going to add that oil until it comes up pretty far in the top. Like you don't want it obviously to the top because we're, what we're looking for is when we're done, we want this gap to be from here to the top of the oil 110 millimeters. So you can kind of see where that ought to be, bish, you know, ish, whatever. Um, and you know, like I can still actually see some bubbles coming up. So I'm, I'm going to keep bleeding this a little bit more um, until it's all gone. And the thing is on these, if you don't do this, if you don't bleed it all the way, it will bleed itself. Like they will get all the air out of the cartridge. That's not a problem. <clears throat> it just will end up with a different level is the only thing. So I feel like that's all right, that's good. So now I'm going to use our level tool from Motion Pro. It's already set for 110 mil. I have it hooked to a uh, Mighty Back style bleeder. Um, the tools usually just come with you know a hand thing. So, um, but this is just faster. So. Now we'll take our spring. So on these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push down and get our wrench onto that nut. And I'll show you up closer. So the nice thing about this nut, you can see if it'll focus, there we go. There's a little lip on it, so it'll hold that. Then, Take our spacers, take our adjusting rod. When you put your adjuster rod in there, you want to put it in there and then push on it. Make sure it springs up and down nice. This one does. Take our cap. So as you go, it's going to stop. Okay? That's it. The rod touching up inside of here in the cap because we've got that nut spun all the way down. So now, what we're gonna do is as we tighten this using just the nut inside, it's gonna bring that bottom nut up to lock it off. Usually, like I said, it starts, kind of stops, and then as you break it loose, it'll then start bringing that nut up. And you wanna make sure you get these spacers all lined up. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to pull this down and put them above the spacers. That keeps the spacers in line. And we're going to tighten this down. And just like on disassembly, you got to use that nut on the top, not the main fork cap. There we go. Chalk it back up. Then we use this to tighten it down because um, now you're just tightening the cap into the fork tube. Finish by putting our bleeder back in. All right. Take it, push on it, make sure it moves like it should. Now we'll set the clickers back where they go. And we'll do the other ones. Now I'm not going to finish the. <laughs> I'm not going to film the other one because the other one is exactly like this one. It just has a brake rotor holder or brake caliper holder on the bottom. So, um, yeah, anyway, hope you guys liked that video. If it helped you and you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe because we do lots of these. Also, if it helped you, leave a comment and let me know. Because um, the whole goal is here to help you guys be able to do this stuff on your own bikes. All right, next job. All right, guys, next on the lift is this little 50 KTM, and you can see that it is super dirty and disgusting and all those things, and the tires are gnarly, and this one's dry rod and cracked. Well, that's why it's here. <laughs> this gentleman is one of our very, very good customers. He's got tons of motorcycles, tons of kids. They ride the, cra anyway, whatever. Mechanically, this thing is perfect. We've actually just been through it, whatever. But he is ready to sell this and move his kids off of 50s and on up to big bikes. Um, which, if anybody here watching this has ever been a 50 dad or mom, you know. 
what a great day it is to get rid of the last 50. Uh, so, especially these two-stroke 50s. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it is here uh, to get everything all new and shiny. So we got plastics, we got tires, all kinds of stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a time lapse and I'm gonna sit here and we're gonna go through this thing and just make it all shiny and brand new. And if anybody here is watching and they're interested and they're interested in purchasing the thing, let me know. Send me an email to morgan at highland-cycles.com and I will get you in touch with this owner. So yeah, I'm gonna set you guys down. We're gonna get after it. Alright guys, little 50s all ready to rock and roll, ready to be sold, um, brand new tires, fresh plastics, it's all ready to rock. So if anyone here is interested, let me know. Again, send an email, morgan at highland-cycles.com. I'll get you in touch with the owner. Uh, it hopefully will already be gone before you see this video uh, for his sake because I know he wants to get off of this and onto some other bigger bikes. So. All right, guys, uh, last job of this vlog is actually just jetting my kids' KX100 to go to Texas. So um, there's a ton of... <laughs> yes! <laughs> Zach's throwing things! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Zach's been waiting all day for me to get the camera off <laughs> <laughs> you screwed it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's still happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was a good day at Highland Cycles. So uh, <laughs> there's lots of videos about jetting. There's lots of videos about people whining about jetting. Uh, I'm going to show you guys right now all I do to jet a bike to go down to a different elevation. So we are headed to the Grandero. It's down in Post, Texas. Elevation is about 3,000 feet. So. We are here at about 6,000 feet, but we ride up pretty high. Uh, not so much during the winter like it is now, but we do in the summer. So uh, we will be um, jetting this up a little bit, but I'm going to show you all you really have to do. Well, it was a movie first. Yeah. All right, guys. So on a KX, it's easy. This comes out and I've got this cutesy little short ratchet come up under here get a hold of the main jet back in pull our main jet out we've got in here a 128 so we're gonna go up two jet sizes that puts it at a 132 put our jet in there now this is the tough part is trying to get this lined up like this but if you just take your time take a wrench and guys when you're tightening the brass parts down on a carburetor just be careful because it's a delicate balance like you don't want it to come loose during a ride because then the bike runs like crap but you really don't want to break it because then it's just a nightmare snug that down put this back in bottom nut and then we'll be good to go. What? <laughs> oh, there we go, guys. That's all it takes to jet a bike. Um, I know we're only going like 3,000 feet in elevation difference, but that's all I did for Oklahoma, which we just got back from. Um, <clears throat> well, it's been a little bit when we went down there, and that was sea level, so we went up four jet sizes on this bike, my 125, and my kids' um, 125. And so, it's not a huge deal. Most two-strokes, you can get to that float bowl, you can get in there and change it. Rarely do you need to change the pilot jet once you've got that dialed in. Rarely do you need to change the needle position once you have that dialed in. Uh, just change main jets and you're good to go. It's really not that big of a deal. Obviously, fuel injection is really nice. It's very easy, it's all that stuff, but carbs are awesome they're simple they work um i like them a lot all right guys that's the end of the schlag it's time for me to head home and get ready to go to texas um when this 
video is coming out, I will be just getting back from Texas. So if you want to watch us at the Grandero 6 down in Post Texas, make sure you uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, click that little notification bell so that you know uh, when we post videos and you can check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cole Kirkpatrick and Russell Bobbitt uh, invited us to go down there. Um, me and my boys, it's just gonna be me and one boy because the other boy has tests and he's all nervous about grades and yeah, I don't understand that, but whatever. He's smarter than me. Uh, so anyway, I love you guys. I hope you had fun with this. I hope you enjoyed the schlag. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Um, I also desperately hope that you get out and spread the gospel two wheels and I really, really, really hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on and get out and ride your dirt bikes! Mm -hmm.